What's up guys, so I've had a Dolby Atmos certified receiver for a few years now and I've never actually had an Atmos setup. I have a 5.1 with the standard speakers, got the surrounds up there. So today I got these and we're going to install these and see if this actually makes a difference. These speakers will sit right on top of the front speakers and it's supposed to give us the Dolby Atmos effect. So let's go ahead and unbox these and uh, see how it sounds. So I got these speakers on Amazon. They were basically a hundred dollars and apparently these came out in 2018 and they were two hundred dollars. I wanted to get the Onkyo uh, speakers that were seventy five dollars but apparently my local fries was sold out. So let's take a look at how these are. Okay, so this is the speaker, and it looks like it has the wall mounting as well. It has these little brackets. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that's for wall mounting. And I think we can remove these to take a look at the speaker. So that's the speaker. It's a single speaker, which I wasn't really too happy about because I wanted to get a speaker that has both a tweeter and a mid-range, but this is supposed to do everything. So we'll see how that looks. So. I'm gonna put these on top of the speaker. Let me clean this up over here. Probably should've done this before. It's gonna sit like this, just like that. Doesn't look too good because the color difference, but that's that. This is all the speaker wire I have left. I hope this is enough to go from my receiver to here. So I'm gonna cut this one out, put it by about that size. I got wire cutters, so we're gonna use these scissors, which might not be able to cut this. There we go, that's one wire. This is my way of doing these wires with a wire cutter. I highly recommend getting the wire cutter. All right, got a nice little wire right there. Move this crap. Luckily, I don't need Wi Fi because I don't use wired internet. So, I'm just gonna stuff this back here so no one can see it. One thing I like about this wire is one side has a blue line and one side doesn't. So, I normally like putting the blue line as the positive. The speaker uses the old style spring connector, it doesn't have the banana connector, so that's a little unfortunate, but it should work. We'll see. One thing I hate about myself is I tied all the wires together. Everything's all tied together. So I have to undo all these wires just to connect this new one. Same with the other side. So that's what I get for not thinking of upgrading when I was making the wires. All right, so I recommend turning off the receiver. Alright, we'll let the speaker set up and turn the receiver back on. So, before we do anything, the first thing you want to do after all this hooking up the new speakers and stuff is calibrate your receiver if it has a calibration feature. So mine does and we're going to go ahead and calibrate it first real quick. So most receivers come with a calibration mic and you're going to need a tripod too if you want to really get into this. Plug in the mic and automatically my receiver is going to go ahead and go into the calibration mode and this is where we're going to change something from before. So as you can see it says height speakers type so we're going to go ahead and change this to front. I mean, you have to make sure that there's absolute silence in the room before you do this. So we're going to set this up on the tripod and you want this where your listening area is so Let's go ahead and see if we can do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and move my little test microphone here. So if I were to sit down on the sofa, my ears are about right here and you want this microphone to be around where you would sit. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to press this and we're going to start hearing the test sounds. I'm going to move out the way so the microphone gets everything. So everything's done. It put the crossover frequencies by itself. I'm going to go back and change these a bit because I want my fronts to be at 80 hertz, not 40, so the subwoofer does more work. But we're going to save this and see how it sounds now. So unplug the microphone. Okay. So now we have everything set up. We're going to go ahead and go into Windows. So I don't think this is going to work at all, and this is probably not scientific, but to kind of give you guys an idea of the setup, I'm going to record the audio that comes out of my speakers using two microphones set to unidirection so they're like this. They're going to create like this type of wave. And I'm going to record them in stereo. So this is going to record a left channel, it's going to record a right channel. I'm going to record in audacity and hopefully this picks up somewhat of an effect. Let me know in the comments if you guys can even hear a difference. I'm going to add it. Hopefully it makes a difference. Hopefully you guys can hear something, but obviously this is not super scientific. So let's see how this sounds. When playing the 5.1, we can see that the receiver shows up as, well, you we can't see it, but right here is the Dolby 5.1 button. All right, so in Windows, you're gonna wanna go to the App Store and you're gonna wanna look up Dolby Atmos. And I already have this installed, it's called uh, Dolby Access. And you're gonna go ahead and install this. So I'm gonna click Launch. Now you have to pay for this if you use headphones. However, if you have the home theater, it's free actually. So we're gonna begin setup. And it's gonna ask you if your receiver is Dolby Atmos enabled, and mine is. So now we're gonna configure the PC settings and we're gonna enable Dolby Atmos for home theater. Okay. And it says now you can continue to enjoy Dolby Atmos. So now we have Dolby Atmos enabled, and we're going to go ahead and test the same file we tested earlier and see if there's a difference now in how things sound. So let's take a look. Let's put the laptop back where it was and see if we can notice a difference. This at this time, the receiver says uh, true HD. So now we're running. True HD Dolby. So let's see if the Atmos speakers are working.
nice things about having these extra speakers is even if you don't play content that's Dolby Atmos certified, you can still get the effect, kind of. So for example, this is a YouTube video, it's a music video, and I've gone ahead and set my receiver to Dolby Surround, and what this will do is it will take in the signal, which is two channels, and it will convert it to a signal where all the speakers are working. So if I play music, if you come closer, this speaker is making an effect, like it's not playing the whole audio, it's only playing parts of the audio to create a sound effect. Overall, I will say one thing, I do notice a difference between Dolby Atmos. I think if I bought speakers kind of like the SVS Prime, the ones that go on the top of the ceiling and shoot down, you'll get a slightly better effect. But I will say that these are actually doing a pretty good job at what they're supposed to from just shooting up into the ceiling. Now the ceiling is like a non-popcorn uh, shape rock ceiling, so yeah, with that said, I can definitely recommend these for $99. If you have a bit more money to spend, I do recommend doing the higher ones. So with that said, I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy my Dolby Atmos content. Uh, as always, subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.